I'm Peter Barber and for 15 years I was responsible for maps and views in the British Library and an area of particular interest to me was Tudor cartography and the item I'm going to be talking about is a remarkable example of that cartography but when you look at it it seems nothing very special. Um, it's a map of land south of Lincoln's Inn it looks perhaps a bit odd because it's oriented with east at the top rather than north at the top, but once you get your head around that, it almost looks like a coloured Google map at the largest scale. And that's essentially what it is. What really is surprising about it is that it dates from about 1583, and it's one of the earliest maps drawn to scale, now or to a uniform scale. Now, to us that seems nothing special. But until that date, if you got maps at all, they tended to emphasise what was important rather than everything else in context. But the fact that it was made of land south of Lincoln's Inn is actually very significant because it was probably sponsored by the benches of Lincoln's Inn who wanted to know what the state of play was with a field that they owned. It was Thicket's Field as I say, south of Lincoln's Inn. And we can get an idea roughly of where it is because on the map you can see Chancery Lane, which still exists, and at the bottom of the map, in other words, at the west, you've got Clement's Inn, which is now a road by the LSE. So you've got a fairly clear idea of the area depicted. But why is it interesting that the lawyers sponsored it? Well, the answer is that since about 1500, lawyers had increasingly been illustrating their legal problems with sketch maps. I mean, they'd done it in a few cases beforehand, but particularly from 1500 onwards, they were doing it more and more. And of course, it was the lawyers who became the new men in the Tudor government, which helps to explain why this sort of mapping caught on with government. But there was more to it than that. As I say, this map was made in about the 1580s, say 1583. And in 1570, Abram Ortelius had published the first modern atlas, the first modern book of maps, and that contained maps from all sorts of places by all sorts of cartographers, but what they all had in common was that they were down to a uniform scale. So lawyers had a chance to see what this sort of map looked like, and some of them immediately began grasping the advantages for things like legal disputes and depictions of fields like this, because thanks to a map, you could draw a line and that line would tell you exactly where the land was divided. So in this case, quite literally, one line was worth a thousand words and actually a line was much clearer. Now, when we look at the map, it looks fairly straightforward. Um, it shows ownership, and so certain houses are depicted in red, which is simple enough. There are other divisions in yellow. Now, those are mainly gardens and open spaces. They're the pieces of land that people happen to own or to occupy, possibly by encroachment, possibly through ownership. So clearly, there's a preoccupation there to know who owns what. So we get the sort of context for why the map was made. The map in, in its own right would be remarkable in many ways, but what makes it particularly remarkable is the egg-like depiction of a pile of earth at the bottom of the map. And the inscription that here were found the images of wax. Now, the images of wax have got nothing to do with the property disputes, potential or actual, that are depicted on the map. But map makers are human beings and they've always liked to add a little bit of extra to show a bit of interest. For instance, their medieval maps, where the map makers have shown the hamlet that they came from, not because the hamlet in any way was a rival to Jerusalem, but because it meant something to them. But the maker of this map noted the lace or the rubbish tip in which the images of wax were found. Now, what were the images of wax? Well, witchcraft. The images of wax were waxen models of Elizabeth I and her first minister, Lord Burley. And they were found with needles in them some five years before this map was made. 
And this poses an interesting sort of fantasy. I want to, want to add also that I've just noticed that the, this rubbish tip is just a few yards away from a bridge which is entitled the Lord Treasurer's Bridge. Well, the Lord Treasurer is Lord Burley. So perhaps it was placed as close as the people could place it to an area which Lord Burley would go along. I don't know. But there it is. And had it been discovered some 30 years earlier, I'm absolutely sure that it would have been a fit subject of investigation by Matthew Shardlake, the creation of, Christ of Christopher Sansom. And it would have been a nice thought to see how Shard Lake would have discovered who did it and actually what happened to, to the culprit. But in this particular case, the authorities called on John Dee, the magician, the ma mathematician, the polymath, who had been working as magician to the Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II in the hope that he could sort out the problem. Well, I don't know whether he did, but what is fact is that both Elizabeth and Lord Burley happily died in their beds. And there is a pathway that goes through other people's property and in fact, even through a house.